Hello, my name is Dr. Snootopia, and this is Lovelution Village. And Lovelution is a worldwide transformation. It is moving us beyond the Christian epoch, and it's moving us into a new epoch. Now, I feel that the Christian era has caused so much destruction. I looked at this when I was writing my dissertation 18 years ago. Here it is, a copy of it, that's at the UMass Library in Massachusetts. And it's called The Gaia Religion, A Sacred Marriage of, an, of Art and Science. I was very inspired by feminist theology when I wrote this manuscript. I learned so much about the relationship between different archetypal religious figures and how they affect our lives. I heard great feminist theologians like Mary Daly speak. She was a professor at Boston University and wrote a book called Beyond God the Father. And when you start looking at the Christian hierarchy, uh, you realize that women are second-class citizens. So what we need to do is overthrow the Christian mythology, and that's what I'm going to do today. That's why I'm here. That is who I am as Doctoress Newtopia, is a prophetess of a different form of religion and that is called Gaia. And Gaia is a superorganism. It has a scientific biological basis because it's the prokaryotic, the, uh, the bacteriological foundation of this planet. That's what Gaia is. It's a superorganism. The, we know that bacteria communicate with each other. They have various ways of communicating both locally and globally. And most of our body is made up of these prokaryotic cells. Bacteria are on our bodies. They're within us. We are made up of them. We are the image of bacteria. So this was so enlightening to me when I started realizing that the bacteria actually talk through us. They live in our guts. And that's what we're living for, is the food to feed these bacteria. And when we die, they actually recycle us. So it's a very fascinating religion based on science that gives us a different way of viewing the world. And it moves us out of this false messiahship that we have been under for the last 2,000 years with Christianity. So I'm going to now do a little meditation for a little meditation for Gaia. Gaia, let us understand the forces of the superorganism. Let us move beyond all the suffering that false messiahs have created on this planet and let us usher in a millennium of peace. That's our goal with the Gaia religion. It's to bring about the second coming of woman. So let's start our slideshow today. I'm big on Facebook and Last night, I decided to change my profile uh, picture. And this is what I replaced it with. This is Greek, 
and it means logos. And if you read my dissertation, which you can read on the internet, I have a section on there about logos. And logos is the word. It's who controls the story. Controls society. And that's why when we see the global corporations controlling the channels of communication on television, on the internet, or wherever they, the newspapers, they have their hands, they tell the stories that then the people digest. So what we need to do is to get these deeper stories out about the Gaia, uh, Messiah, um, out to the public because it changes consciousness when we understand the mythology that is ruining our world. This is Michelangelo's image that's on the Sistine Chapel of Adam and God. And he, God, is creating Adam in his image. Now, this isn't how it works in nature. We know that people were made through the evolutionary process. It just didn't happen like magic, like that Michelangelo image. And you have to realize that Michelangelo was very um, oppressed as an artist. He was under the rule of the Catholic Church, who was feeding him and allowing him to be creative, but under the restrictions of he had to tell their stories. And he was a very unhappy man because of this. Now, the Adam and Eve story Let's look at that. We see now that Adam comes out of, I mean Eve, comes out of Adam's rib. And it is this serpent that is the, that tempts her to take the apple of the tree of life. Now, in reality, both of these stories of the creation of Adam and Eve coming out of Adam's rib is not how evolution functions. It's like, it's a perverted story, actually, because we know from anthropology that women are older in the evolutionary line of humanity than men are. So it was the other way around. Men came out of women, not the other way around. And as far as birth, we know that women birth men. God doesn't birth them. It's not the males who do birth. And so when we see these kind of mythologies, it causes our brains to start, uh, start becoming insane. It ruins our relationship with nature of the natural order of things when we have these kind of reversal stories that give us false, a false mythology. And as far as Eve coming out of Adam's rib, that makes her into the helpmate of Adam, a secondary citizen uh, that is there just for Adam, who happens to be uh, his like mother, which of course we know that doesn't happen either. And then we can get to the story of the virgin. Now we're getting into Christianity. And Christianity is just more of this uh, manipulation of the role of women. We see that these men, these older men, are crowning uh, 
Mary. And there is the dove who comes and asks her or tells her that she is going to be uh, the mother of Christ. And she doesn't have much say so in this decision. She goes along with it. And in the Bible, it some, says something like, the shadow will come over her and that will impregnate her. Well, it sounds a lot like rape. So this is the way the patriarchy works. It uses women in a way to keep them down so that the power is maintained in the male system. This is so wrong. And I really feel it is the reason why our planet is on the verge of collapse. Because if you have a mythology that turns around the natural order of life, then of course it's just going to be a system that doesn't comprehend how nature works. And so we've had 2,000 years of warfare, of not being able to create the garden here on earth. And we're at the point now of looking towards an apocalyptic situation. And here is a Madonna image. You can, uh, the Madonna is her main spiritual focus is motherhood. Now that's really oppressive to women to see their role primarily as mother, as a child rearer, who is under the authority of God the Father. She's not a goddess in this mythology she becomes a saint. And it was said that when she gave birth, her body remained intact. And then also, when she dies in the Catholic tradition, her body doesn't smell bad. She's so pure. Now that's not how birth and death happen. Christianity is like a sexless religion. It doesn't understand sex. It has no ability to guide people in sexual relationships, which is why we have a dysfunctional society. And all these abuses happen within the family situation. Now, in my dissertation, I start realizing that this mother-son relationship this is the main icon of women in Christianity, is actually an incestuous image. Because when the baby Jesus grows up, after he rises up and goes to heaven, Mary rises up and goes to heaven, and they become the king and queen of heaven. They are the rulers. So they have this marriage going on that is very perverted. And I feel that this is the basic structure of injustice, this mother-son relationship that favors the boys over the girls and causes sexual warfare to go on. You can see in this picture that they're actually putting a crown on Mary's head, which is not an image of democracy. And when we live in a democracy, we need icons of equality, which of course we do not have in the United States since our main ruling governance structure, the presidency, uh, still is not in equal partnership with the spouse of 
the ruler. In other words, our, the wife of the president doesn't have an equal say to the president. Now, I write about this in an essay I wrote, The Natural Sovereignty of Womankind, which you can find at my website uh, at, let's see, well, you can write me here, or it's www.lovelution.net, and it's under the button Essays and read that natural sovereignty of womankind, which talks about the need for a co-presidency so that we can stop this inequality between um, this ruling metaphor of sexual reproduction. Now we're coming to the Easter season and so tomorrow is Easter and they, all the Christians are starting to uh, praise Jesus for coming out of the coffin. <laughs> so along with sex, not being able to deal with sex in Christianity, they're not able to deal with death. And so what they've done is they've had Jesus who doesn't die, who is so pure that he defies the forces of nature, that his body does not recycle like the rest of humanity. Now we know that death is real. It occurs. And when we die, the forces within us, the bacteria, start eating us. So it's going back to the earth. This is what actually happens. So when we have this religion that worships this, this um, resurrection, uh, we're in trouble because that's not the way that life works. So it allows people to continue to be in a denial about the cycles of life. And here is a, a Renaissance painting where they're actually looking at the wounds of Christ. And this is in Christianity and the whole forgiveness um, scenario that Jesus talks about, that you forgive the people who harmed you. Um, and so he's looking at his wounds proudly. You know, these are something to be proud about, that he did this so that the rest of humanity um, can learn from what happened. But it's not a sense of justice. There was no justice in, the, in this story. Um, and, and so we live in this situation on this planet where we don't have the justice needed to stop nuclear weapons, to end the, the exploitation of nature, to stop economic slavery. So what good is Christianity? That's what I'm saying. It has not given us the big questions that we need to address in order to stop the global warming to stop the madness of what is happening to our cities. And there Mary is in another subservient role to Jesus. And this has got to stop. Women, we have got to understand that we have gifts to give to humanity that have been ignored, that have not been acknowledged that we don't get any recognition for in society. And this has got to stop. We have two parts of our species and they need equality. And women are different than men. So we need to acknowledge that as well. We need to understand what the divine feminine is all about. The wisdom component of our species that we're missing in order to create a utopian society on this planet. 
because this is an image I found on the internet of the kingdom of heaven. And look at that. What do you think? You're going to die and you're going to go up in the clouds and you're going to see these, uh, this golden city. And then if you've been good, you're going to be able to live in there. I wouldn't even want to live in there. Look at that. It looks like a medieval fortress. And where's the green? Where are the gardens? So there, and there's nothing in the Bible that really tells us how to govern that city, how we create it. All it says is, you know, look for the kingdom within yourself. Well, I've looked and I haven't found that kingdom. And I don't want that kingdom. Forget kingdom. What about queendom? Or how about this? How about democracy? Why don't we create democracy? That's what we need to do. And that's why Occupy Tucson is so important because it is looking at how we create this society that is listening to each other, that is, is, is using the forces of evolution, that wants to get back to creating the garden on earth. So I urge you to begin to follow the Occupy Tucson movement, to come out to the General Assemblies, learn how to do it, and stop living for this kingdom of heaven, which is never going to manifest. And then we have this terrible situation of this judgment, the, the end of times, where Jesus is there, and you can see the woman at the bottom, you know, looking, oh, help me, Jesus. That's not the way it's going to work, ladies. It's working that men have got to start listening to us. Have them be our helpmates for a while. Have them follow us to this garden situation. And I am glad that Eve took that apple from the tree and ate it. She should have eaten it. She, and then Adam should have followed her. <laughs> now this, this is Jesus now. This is a contemporary. I can see him at some kind of Baptist church preaching. And then he's probably driving a Mercedes Benz. You know, see, they, they, these, these Christians have this um, talent for saying one thing and doing another thing. And they love to spend money and they spend it on these, um, these churches. And what happened was they even used Mary to build their churches. Mother Mary becomes the, the church becomes the womb of Mary, not Mary Magdalene. And in the name of Jesus, they came to the wonderful United States and they did this holocaust of the native people, called them savages, stole their land, all these wonderful Christians. So we really need to rethink what we did. And we need to go back to this nature image of the circle and, and all of the different species that we need in order to survive on this planet and get out of this church ego, Jesus consciousness of Jesus on the top. And you see women in that ego hierarchy is with the whales, you know, because they've never really considered us human in their... Christian way of thinking. So I am so happy on the eve of Easter to become the Antichrist here at Access Tucson because we need the second coming of woman. And I hope that somehow your heart has been inspired here, especially talking to women and feminist men out there, that we can change this world and that we can move beyond the Christian insanity. <laughs>